MegCram.com. Welcome to another MegCram COVID-19 update. I am back in the ICU this week again, and I'm noticing that it's very easy to admit a patient to the hospital with COVID-19, but it's difficult to discharge the patient. The patients are not getting better very quickly, and nursing homes want two negative tests before they'll take them back in most cases. Here are the daily new cases in the United States, and they seem to be taking undulating appearance with a period of about seven days. Interestingly, the same pattern appears with daily deaths. We're not seeing that in Canada with daily new cases, but there is a similar appearance with daily deaths in Canada. Daily cases in the United Kingdom also undulating, and daily deaths in the United Kingdom as well undulating. We're seeing a similar pattern with daily new cases in Spain, and not so much with daily deaths in Spain, although it is decreasing, fortunately. If we look at all the countries in terms of the most amount of new deaths yesterday, top is still the United States, followed by Brazil, then France, then the United Kingdom, and then Italy. In terms of new cases, the United States still tops a list, but it's followed by Russia, and then Brazil, and then the UK, and then India. So we're starting to see a little bit different pattern here. As we can see here, new cases in Russia is really starting to take off. Okay, I wanted to bring you up to date on some information regarding the blood pressure medications, ACE inhibitors, or ARBs. And there was recently an editorial that was published about three studies in the New England Journal of Medicine on May 1st regarding the inhibitors of renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system and COVID-19. And remember what we talked about last time. We said that angiotensin-2 is converted into angiotensin-1-7 by the enzyme ACE2. The problem is SARS-CoV-2 binds to ACE2 and inhibits it. And that's, of course, a problem because in terms of superoxide and this oxidative stress, angiotensin-2 stimulates the oxidative stress and angiotensin-1-7, which is an antioxidant, inhibits oxidative stress. But there's one other thing that happens because SARS-CoV-2 actually causes directly enzymes and specifically PMNs to activate the oxidative stress by releasing hydrogen peroxide and things of that nature. Well, there's one other part to this too, and that's angiotensin-1 is converted into angiotensin-2 by the enzyme ACE. So there are medications called an ACE inhibitor. Those end in pril, like lisinopril, like enalapril, etc. And what they do is they block ACE. That's good because when they block ACE, you don't have as much angiotensin-2, and therefore you won't get as much oxidative stress. At the same time, there's also something called an ARB, an angiotensin receptor blocker. And that has a couple of effects. Number one, there's some evidence that angiotensin receptor blockers may actually upregulate angiotensin 2. There's also some evidence that ACE inhibitors might upregulate angiotensin 2. But we definitely know that ARBs are going to block angiotensin 2 from binding and causing oxidative stress. And so the question for a long time would be, because ACE inhibitors increase the amount of ACE2, is that going to lead to more infections because there's more targets for SARS-CoV-2? In other words, how does ACE inhibitors or ARBs affect, number one, the ability to become infected with COVID-19, and number two, the course of the disease itself? Because you see, you had many people on these blood pressure medications who had high blood pressure or who had kidney diseases, and they wanted to know, should they stay on them or should they stay off of them? And actually, we have some good data tonight that we can go through. And this article actually steps us through it. Now, all of these are observational studies, and so there's a lot of confounders. But the first one looked at patients in 11 countries, and the number was 8,910 subjects. And in that study, they found that for ACE and ARBs, when they did the analysis, there was no association with increased risk of death. 
And they did another association on this, and they found that even in those who had hypertension, there was no increased risk of death. There was another study that was done, this time looking in northern Italy. And here, they looked at 6,272. And they matched them with 30,759 patients of the same gender and location. And they found that ACE inhibitors and ARBs did not associate with a higher risk of infection. Which means that even though these things may have increased the amount of ACE2 and potentially more receptors for the virus, it did not increase the risk of infection. The third study was in New York City, and it looked at 12,594. And again, there was no association with ACE or ARBs with COVID-19 positivity or severity of illness. Now, if we go back to this analysis back here, the one that looked at 11 countries, they did find something interesting with statins. These are medications that are used for cholesterol, and they also found it with ACE inhibitors. These medications were associated with a decreased in-house or in-hospital mortality, but they were not associated with an increased risk of getting the infection. So that is actually quite remarkable. Now, occasionally you might see YouTube pull down videos. You know, YouTube has a big job to do in terms of policing the videos that get uploaded to its network. But if you want to know the best way to catch every single MedCram COVID-19 update without commercials, come directly to MedCram.com. All of our COVID-19 videos are updated here. They're commercial free and they'll never be pulled down. And you can see here, we have some other free offerings. Our COVID-19 ventilator course, our COVID-19 ABG interpretation, and also our lung ultrasound in COVID-19. Plus, there's hundreds of other videos to choose from. Come on over and thank you for joining us.